Hey, this is René. Welcome back to another programming tutorial. And in this video, we will do something completely new that we ne never did before on this channel, um, which is writing an indicator. So what I want to do in this video is I want to um, show you how to set up a indicator or the source code for an indicator in MetaTrader 5. And what we will do is we will... Um, have an indicator that always um, indicates the previous days, highs and lows. So, for example, if we have this um, one hour um, chart here and we have um, like the, um, the, the previous days, highs and lows. Um, so let me search for it real quick. I think this has to be the high here. And the low has to be down here. And um, we do not only want like these two horizontal lines for the previous day, but what we want is we want to have um, lines that are always updated, like on the top and on the bottom of the um, price action pretty much. And it always indicates like the previous day uh, high and low. And um, we want to use it in any time frame, so it shall be updated. Okay, so let's uh, just start with it um, by uh, jumping right into the programming part. So first of all, open the integrated development environment, which is IDE or the MetaQuotes Language Editor. You can find it by clicking on Tools MetaQuotes Language Editor or simply click on this IDE button here. And there you have the um, meta um, editor, which is the tool that you can use to write expert advisors, which are the programs that open and close trades or indicators in MetaTrader 5 and also scripts and um, much more. But in this case, we want to choose um, to write an indicator. So um, on the very left side at the top, click on new, then click on custom indicator if it is not already selected, then click on next. And then you will have to provide a day, uh, a name, like previous day, high, low, um, indie. I mean, the name doesn't really matter. We can just say previous day, high, low. And then you can click on next, next, and finish. And this will create the raw template for any indicator in MetaTrader 5. This looks a little bit different than expert advisors. Um, which we programmed several times on this channel already. So let us break down like the main functions of indicators. But first of all, I want to erase all the gray lines because they are just comments and they do not affect the program at all. Um, okay, so... When we talk about indicators, we have to talk about this function mainly, which is the on calculate function. Um, but first of all, let's talk about these properties. We do not really need these properties um, or the, the, the three properties um, on top because they are just a information for the, uh, for the, for the user of the program. Um, and we do not really need the copyright, the link and the version. But what we need is the property indicator chart window. And there are some other properties that we will need later on. So first of all, the property indicator chart window, it says that this indicator will be displayed in the chart window. For example, if we go back to MetaTrader 5, this is the chart window. There are other windows. For example, let me demonstrate this. Um, if we, for example, use a um, RSI, relative strength index, if we use an, use an RSI indicator, you can see that this will open a new window. So this is not a chart window, this is a separate indicator window. And the indexing of these windows is always like the chart window has index 0, and then all the indicator windows have uh, uh, index 1, 2, 3. Um, it depends on how many indicator windows uh, there are. So let me delete this again. In this case, we will go with the chart window because we want the lines to be displayed in our main chart. So 
This is like the first property that we have. Then we have this on init function, which is called whenever the program is initialized, and we will need this function later on. And then we have the on calculate function. This is something completely new on this channel, so let me take one or two um, minutes here to explain this function. So um, this function is called whenever the indicator is calculated, which is pretty much the on tick function in expert advisor. So if there is a price change, for example, the on calculate is automatically called. And you can see this function has several parameters. And these parameters are provided or delivered by the MetaTrader 5 itself. So whenever this function is called and when we add code to the body of this function, we can make use of these parameters here, these variables. For example, we could um, say we want to print the rates total and the previous calculated values here. These are the first two variables that are provided to us as integer um, values. So if we print this and if we now attach this indicator to any chart, so go to your navigator on the left side in the MetaTrader 5, search for previous day high-low. Oh, and if you do not find it here, you will have to compile it in the Meta Editor up here. Use this compile button because this will turn your code into a executable file that you can then execute in MetaTrader 5. So I can now attach it to the chart and we can see there are already several print messages here. And the first one is the rates total, which is pretty much just the total amount of bars in the current chart. So for example, if we change to another chart like this M5, the total amount of bars changes. If we go to D1, it should be even less. If we go to the weekly chart, it should be less because there are not so many bars in this chart. But you can see like in this rates total variable, there's always the total amount of bars for the current chart and time frame. Then we have this previous calculated. And this is a little bit tricky because on, on the end of the on calculate function, you can return something. It should be an integer value. And this is usually the um, rates total variable because this comment says it already, the return value of this on calculate function will be the previous calculated value for the next call. So, this means if I return, for example, 5 instead of rates total, this previous calculated value will always be 5, as you can see here. And if I return, for example, 200 or 2,222, uh, it will be 200. Um, oh, no, it is not because... Um, it doesn't have that many bars. Okay, there's another, um, um, the, the program checks if we even have this many bars. But like in short, the value you will return here for the on calculate function will be the rates total value for the next tick. So this is why you usually want, want to return the rates total value here because um, for the next tick, it is then the previous calculated value. I said that wrong uh, one time. So this is um, yeah important to understand. Then we also have several arrays that are provided to us um, in the onCalculate function. And these arrays, like the time, the open, the high, and the low, they're always, um, they always refer to the bars in the current chart. For example, right now we are in the M30, a 30 minute chart for euro US dollar. And if we, for example, print the time at index zero, we will receive a value here. So have a look at this. We now receive the 5th of uh, June 2014 at 12 o'clock. And you might ask yourself, what is this time? Because right now we have 2022 and this doesn't really make sense. But if we would go like to the very left side of this chart, 
I mean, this will take a while, so let me change it to the monthly chart here. Uh, I think it's easier there. Or to the weekly, no. Yeah, the monthly chart, okay, it's, it's loading. So now you can see we have 1971, and this is the very first bar on the left side. So um, you can see if we print the value at index zero, we will get the value at the very left side for the very first bar in this chart. And we can, of course, not only print the time, but we can also print, for example, the open of this bar at index zero in this current chart. So you can see like the first um, bar here has um, the open price, um, let me check it, of 0 0.5386 and, oh no, 69, you can see it here. And it, this is uh, exactly the value that is printed here. So you can, already see that in these arrays we will have easy access to all the price and time and all the data pretty much for every single bar in the chart. And you usually do not use zero here, but we could for example also say previous calculated or bars total um, or rates total minus one because this will give us the values for the current bar. So if we have a look at it now, you can see the current bar is, um, yeah, has, has these values that are now displayed in the experts journal. So this is how you can have easy access to all the relevant information for every single bar in the chart. And this also works for the high, the low, the close, the tick volume, the volume, and the spread for every single bar. So you can always use like the index of the bar, which could be some any value between zero and rates total minus one. And you can use any of these values to get the information for one specific bar in the chart. And if we now, try to uh, put like this, this, these lines for the previous day high and low in the chart, we will have to do this stuff for every single bar in the chart. So usually you use a loop for this. And you can do something like um, int previous calculated, oh no, int i is equal to previous calculated, and as long as i is smaller than rates total, you increase i by one. So this would be like a loop that you will find in this form or in a similar form in pretty much any indicator. You, you often see a loop that loops through all the bars in the chart. And this is important because you want to have a value for every single bar in the chart that you will then put later on in a buffer, which is then displayed on the chart. So th this is a little bit confusing and complex if you never worked with indicators. But first of all, let us create these buffers that we can then use. And this is where properties come into play because for expert advisors, we never really work with properties, but for indicators, you absolutely have to work with properties. And there are several properties that are made for indicators. So if you have a look at the reference, you can open it by clicking F1 on your keyboard or by going to, I think, help, MQL5 reference. And there you can search for index and then search for property or this hashtag property. And you will find all the possible properties is that you can use for your programs. And you can see that many of these properties start with indicator underscore mm -hmm, something. And we will use a lot of these because we will have to define buffers and plots and we can even define like the colors and the names for these lines. So, but first of all, let's say that um, we want to have indicator, we want to have two indicator buffers and we want to have two indicator plots. And Buffers are always like, um, uh, it, it, it's a bunch of numbers pretty much. It's 
um, a row of numbers where every bar in the chart can have one number. It's usually a double value and it is some value that can be but doesn't have to be displayed on the chart. If it has to be displayed, you will need a plot for this because plots are like the visual data where you take the buffer data and put it on the chart so it is visual for the user. So in this case, we will have a line for the previous day high and the previous day low. So we will need two buffers to store the values, like the price data inside, and we will, we will, have, um, we will need two plots to display the values on the chart. Okay, and again, you can read about this in this property um, uh, entry here in the reference. So you can, for example, where is it? There should be something for, yeah, buffers and plots. And yeah, I think there is even uh, some example code down here. And you can see we also need like the, or we can also define the type. And this is something that we should absolutely do. So we can say property indicator underscore type. And then we will have to provide a um, index. And the first index for the first line is index one. And then we can provide a, um, a type. And again, read about this in the properties. So you will find indicator type somewhere here. And you can see this is indicator type and then this N. And you can see the N is the number of graphic series. And we said that we have two graphic series here, two plots. This is why we start with number one because the indexing or the numbering starts at one. And we can specify any value of this enum draw type enumeration and we choose the draw line identifier here because we want to draw lines. And of course, we want to do the same indicator type for the second line. This also has to be a line. So the program has to know what it has to display on the chart. Okay, so since we now said that we will fill two buffers, we have to create these buffers here. And these buffers are usually um, arrays of type double. So we can say something like this. We create two arrays. This array will hold the values for the previous day high. This will hold the values for the previous day low. And now we can match these buffers or we can uh, always like match one buffer and one of these arrays. So the indicator has to know where it has to take the data from and the data will be stored in these arrays. So we say uh, set index buffer and then we have um, the buffer number and here it starts at zero, the indexing. This is a little bit confusing because here it starts at one and here it starts at zero. But zero will be um, like what is one here. So this is our first line or the, uh, the line for the previous day high values. And you can see as a second parameter for the set index buffer function, we will have to provide a double array, which is our previous day high array. And then we can say this is indicator data. And then we do the same thing, of course, for the previous day low array. And this is again indicator data. Okay, so once we did this, we can now go ahead and say that um, um, or the moment we do this, this will tell the program that in this array, there will be the value, the, the data stored for every single bar. So when we do this, um, the arrays or the size of the arrays will automatically be recalculated and they will be as large as the amount of bars in the current chart. And this is why we can put data into these arrays now for every single bar. For example, if I say I want to put in the previous day high array at index 
I I want to put a value, and the value will be, for example, the high of this bar. If I do something like this, I hope it doesn't throw an error. But yeah, no, you can see now we have, we, we, we already see a result. You can see here, this previous day high-low indicator now draws a line which always connects like the high for every single bar in the chart. This is cool, right? And what we can also do is, for example, we can say previous day low at index i shall be the low of every bar. So if we combine this, we should see another line at like the lower side of the price action. So this is already working, but this is not really what we want. Right, because we do not just want to like show the high and the low of the current chart because we can see this obviously without having these lines. But what we want is we want the high and the low of the daily chart of the previous day. So what we do here is we can we first of all have to calculate the like the high and the low of the previous daily chart for every time frame. So what we want to do is we will have to search for the index first. So what we can do here is we can say int shift and then we use the i bar shift function here because the i bar shift function it can give us the shift value of a specific chart for a specific time and this is great because we can now specify the chart so we say for the current chart for the current D1 chart, because we want the daily chart, we can then provide a time. And the time is, of course, our time from this time array at index i, which we use to loop through all the bars of the current chart. And this is it. So now we have the shift value for the daily chart. And what we can do now is we can calculate the high of this daily chart using the i high function. We can, cannot use these arrays because these arrays always hold the data for the current chart time frame. And since we want the fixed daily chart time frame, we will have to use the i high function for this. But this works great because we can provide the symbol. Again, we say that we want the D1 chart and then we have this shift value now. This is the shift value, which we then increase by one and um, this when yeah I think this this not does not work for the very first daily bar because there is no previous bar I think but we can still use this code I think and we should use the same for the low so we say I low and the rest stays the same. And now again, we say previous day high at index i, we add this high value and previous day low at index i, we add this calculated low value for the daily chart. So I hope that this works and that the um, result is not completely false. Okay, there are two warnings because um, we used high and low as variable names, but these are the names for these arrays already, so this is not really recommended. So we should change it to D1 so there is no confusion. Like this. So compile it and let's have a look. It does not work. Damn. Um, but, oh no, we see data. We will just have to check if this is somewhat correct. Oh, I think it is correct, right? Because... Let me simply remove my lines here. Yeah, this is really cool. So we can see like for the current day, which should start here, like the lower line here is the previous day low and the upper line is the previous day high. And this is now working for every single day. And the really cool thing is we can simply change time frames and and, and, and it also works. It still works. And this is because the indicator setup in MQL5 or MetaTrader 5 is like this. Because the on calculate automatically receives new 
price data or chart data for the current chart once you change the time frame. And this is why this is so great. And you can see, um, we also can use this function for every single time frame because we are using these previous calculated and with total uh, and everything data. And you can see that this, um, if I print this i uh, and previous calculated and rates total, you will see something that is really important because um, this will now print a lot of data first in the experts journal. But once this is finished, um, for every, every other tick, it only uh, calculates for a new bar. And this is really important because on the very first execution of the program, it has to calculate the data for the whole chart because we need a value for every single bar in the chart. But this is really, um, this is a huge effort for your PC. So this takes a lot of resources. You can see this is still like the calculation for the first um, activation of the program. This is why we use something like this. We say if i is smaller than rates total, which means that after the first tick, this is only calculated if there's a new bar, right? So you can see um, this is now calculated up to the very last bar here, but this will now stay the same. So there are no more calculations until there is a new bar. Because once there is a new bar, this rate's total value will be increased by 1. So the previous calculated value, which is i, is smaller than this value. And this will be calculated again for the new bar. So this is like a concept that is used in this form or a similar form in nearly any indicator. And this is really important because you do not want to calculate everything for every single tick or calculation. This would be too, uh, would be a huge effort for your PC. Okay, so this is basically like the logic for the program. And this is working great. So what we can still do is some, uh, we can add some visual like spice here and make it, li uh, make it look a little bit um, sexy. So these lines are ugly as... They are now because they are gray. They are, they do not have a specific width or something. And we can make some adjustments here. So we do this by having a look at this um, indicator types. Or we, we could also go to the settings of the program and like change the width of the line or the color here, right? We could say this shall be blue and this would change the color. Okay, it is not blue. Something didn't work here, I think. <laughs> Um, why isn't it? Okay, looks like I cannot even change the color. But what we can do is we can... Why can't I change the color? This is weird. I should be able to change the color to something. Okay, never mind. But we can do it in the source code. So uh, let's jump right into the source code and we can add some more properties. For example, we have... Um, indicator style and do not forget this n numeration and we can have several styles for example we could have style dash and we can copy this for the second line and we could have style um, dot and if we compile this and have a look at the lines again we should see that they are they should look different but they don't yeah, maybe let me um, run the program again. Okay, now it is working. So you can see now the lines are um, different. They look different because they have a different style. And as the style, just like the style, we can change some other properties. For example, we can say indicator color. Color one shall be, uh, I don't know, we can make it blue. And the next one property indicator color 2, it shall be red. So this will change like the um, the color of these lines. And you can, of course, or you should be able to change them here. Color um, yellow, 
or yellow like this and it is yellow now you cannot see it but it is yellow so you can say black for example so you can change the color um, but the values that you provide here as properties they are the default values for this program and we could uh, also say indicator width like um, how big or how 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 bold the line should uh, the lines should be we can say width shall be 3 and this should make the lines bigger now um, let me delete the indicator and activate it again i think it doesn't uh, work if you um, update it and um, you would have to um, remove it from the chart and activate it again i think indicator um, label we can also provide a label which is a text value we can say previous day high for the for the upper line and for the lower line we can say previous day low and these are now the names for these two lines so you can see this um, is previous day high and you can see these are also the lanes uh, the names that are displayed in the data window and this is previous day low so you can see this is working already um, yeah, I think this should be style uh, style solid, I think, or it should be at least like the same for both lines because otherwise it looks weird. So we can make both solid and maybe choose a thickness or a width of two so they are not too bold. Okay, but you can see this is working now and it looks beautiful. Let me like remove it again and put it on the chart one more time so you can see the final result and you can of course use this indicator for your trading previous days uh, previous day high or low values are often support or resistance levels of course where you could uh, place your trades or your stop losses and this little and easy indicator now helps you to yeah find these level like really fast Okay, so this is it. Um, just a basic indicator tutorial on this channel. Um, make sure to yeah read a, read in the in the MQL5 reference about some of the thing, things you do not understand. Of course, you can read about the onCalculate function here, where everything is like explained in detail. And um, yeah, maybe you can write your own indicator after this. So let me think. Uh, let me let me know what you think about this tutorial and um, uh, leave a like if you liked it and recommend it to your friends. Maybe so more people can benefit uh, benefit from this. So, uh, anyways, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.